This was um, really hard to get made because we had no finance apart from private investors and the backing of E1. So our build up to it was a little bit rocky and whether we're going to make it, we're not sure. And then we started shooting in January and here we are. So that's been brilliant. I met Tony when we did a, a TV a Red Riding trilogy based on the David Peace novels and we met then. And that's where the, the, sort of the sort of seed of the idea came. I'd always said I wanted to play a, a female comedian in the sort of 70s in the working men's clubs and my sort of admiration for Marty Kane and you know how it must have been for a woman to work to work her way up through that system so that's where it came from but it took you know and Tony wrote the script very quickly this beautiful script but it took us a while to get it but as is the life of trying to make a film in you know a British film yeah it's about um, a 1970s theme of an up-and-coming female comedian fighting against the background of, uh, of misogyny and sexism and, and trying to get her way through the working men's club circuit and uh, anybody who was around that time knows how difficult that was. So um, set in the north of England, not, not a specified location, but uh, she, she's uh, obviously played by Maxine Peake. Um, Tony Pitts plays her not very pleasant boyfriend. Um, she's somewhat saved by the more esoteric Paddy Considine. Uh, play, plays her middle-class lover. Um, you'll obviously have to go and see the film to see what happens in the end. But it's very funny. But it's also, you know, very poignant. It's, it's got a social message, as you'd imagine from a Maxine Peak film. Um, but it, it's a really good story. It feels great to be part of the festival, and I obviously have a very small role in this film, singing beside Richard Hawley in our in our duo. We're called Coffee and Cream. We're part of one of the turns at this working men's club, but very happy to be part of what is quite a sublime moment in this very romantic on one hand and quite gritty and realistic film on on the other hand. And so I'm really really happy to be here in the in the, in the mix of that. It's the story that you you want, isn't it? Really? Really, it's a story about someone breaking down barriers with women getting into comedy, but the ma making of the film being independently funded, written by somebody who's breaking through. So it's, I think it says everything that's good about British cinema. People getting up and just doing it. I think also when you've got to look at the time that the film's set in to where we are today, I mean, it's, it's a completely different world in many respects, isn't it? There's, women are now so well represented in everything. We've got a female prime minister. You know, we've got, and no one even bat an eyelid about, about what sex she is in sport, football, <laughs> rugby, things that were traditional men's sports, women featured in that, and in comedy, you know, having been on the circuit and shared the stage with him. When you're in a comedy club, when you walk on stage, you're funny or you're not funny. After, after two minutes, people forget what sex you are, forget what colour you are, forget everything about you. You're either funny or you're not, and that's, that's why it's a meritocracy. That's why this film has such a good voice. No, I wouldn't say a big movie star. I share a scene with me dog and the dog steals it so I think that I put my, my movie career in perspective. Well, the dog couldn't come because his agent didn't organise a special box for him to lie in. He had a, he had a few things on the rider and they, they said no so he wouldn't make it.